War Room Sports, www.warroomsports.com. What? Ain't no more to it. Welcome, everybody, to a few good minutes in the War Room. I'm Devin McMillan, and I'm here with my co-host, Jimmy Williams and B. Austin. General B. Austin. All right, so today the topic is John Embry, Colorado University. Uh, he was the head coach of the football team for two years. He was fired today after serving two of the five years of the contract that he signed in 2010. Uh, in his tenure there, he was 4-21. Uh, he was 1-11 this season. He had eight straight losses to end the season. He had a pretty some pretty bad losses tied in there. Uh, 70 to 14 to Oregon, uh, 48 to nothing to Stanford, 38 to three to Washington. Um, it is what it is. I mean, we can't really justify him not being fired based on those numbers. Um, but in his press conference, he touched on a few things that are interesting to us here in the war room that we wanted to talk about today. Uh, he spoke about how black coaches. Once they were fired, they didn't get another chance, and he felt like he didn't get enough uh, time to turn around the program. Uh, Jimmy, what do, what, what, do, what do you think of this whole situation, not necessarily the firing, but the comments that he made in his press conference about black head coaches not getting a second chance? It's funny because when you look at the data, he wasn't making this up. I mean, this is a reality. It is not so much about him losing this job, um, although you can make an argument for that as well uh, in terms of him not getting enough time. And also, if you look what he done uh, from an academic standpoint, because the GPAs rose under his tenure there as head coach. But uh, if you look at, like, you know, guys, Tyrone Willingham, um, just a lot of different African-American coaches when they've had a chance, it just hasn't been as easy to bounce back and get a, a um, second chance to be a head coach. Well, I actually, Jim... Now that you say that, I actually have some stats on that. Uh, okay. There were 41 black head coaches in Division One college football. This is all time. Uh, there are about 13 of those guys who still have jobs right now. But of all the guys who have been fired over the years, only one, only one of these black head coaches got a second head coaching job, and that was the guy you just mentioned, Ty yeah. Willingham. Yeah. Uh, B. Austin, what, what do you think about a statistic like that? And does John Embry make a very good case in you know, what he's saying in his press conference? John Embry makes a valid point, point. Um, and, and in laying that point out, I think he does a disservice. Um, his record actually does a disservice to the point that he's uh, trying to make because how can I really justify someone who has never had any success in their coaching career in terms of wins and losses. Um, you know, so it, it, it's kind of like the, 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 you get into a situation where why would someone rehire you when your record is four and 21, but when you move past that and you look at some of the things that other coaches have gone through, he certainly has a valid point. Um, I think that the institution of college football has never had African Americans in its power structure, and the coach is kind of the in, the um, the interface between the player and the team and that power structure. So those that black coaches would report to don't look like them. So you know what do you what do you expect? Um, but then again, when you have a, a record such as John Embry's, it, it doesn't make a good case for you being rehired at four and twenty one. <laughs> but a, but a, one of the big problems in this whole thing is the fact that these black head coaches, they're getting bad jobs to begin with. So yeah, you're, you're getting point. a job. It's kind of like President Obama in, in, in a certain aspect where you're handed crap and you're expected to do something with it pretty quickly. Even though he signed a five-year deal, they didn't feel like they, they've seen enough uh, progress in the last two years. As a matter of fact, they probably think that everything's gotten worse. So, And then a lot of times... You know, a lot of situations like this, things have to actually get worse before they get better. Um, we live true. in a, in a made, new jerk society. A oh, go ahead, go ahead, Jim. You made a point that it was only, you, I think you said something like 41 total. 41 total. This is all time black. I mean, that's black. crazy. And if you look now, I guess now they're getting more opportunities than they did before, even though it's still not many. And it's also a situation where they're getting an opportunity, 
when society is kind of, uh, you know, changed in the sense that we live in a society which is based on immediacy. So they don't even get an opportunity to build the program. College football isn't as simple as you come in and you flip a switch and, you know, the program. You have to build a program. And yeah. not just in college football, in all of sports, you see this thing where if it's not working right away, hey, let's get rid of this guy. Let's get rid of this guy. No one's really given a chance to build a program, so to speak. So now that they are getting, you know, more opportunities than before, although it's not many, you know, it's at a time where we need stuff done right away. Yeah, and that's that's a that's a very valid point. That's another that's a separate issue in college in sports at large with coaches, with GMs, with front office personnel. If you can't turn a program or a team around immediately, then you're gone. So a lot of these owners and and higher ups are becoming prisoner of the moment and saying, Okay, I'm not gonna give you the time because I need you to win now so my fan base is satiated. And that's that's its own issue and its own problem. I think when you're looking at black coaches, see, one of the things when, when, when you're talking about the NCAA, um, when you're talking about the NCAA, you're talking about being able to recruit. Um, and so a lot of these coaches, it's not about their ability to handle strategy or ability to truly coach. It's about what type of recruits are they getting? What reputation right. do they have amongst see, the, the high school populace? That's the, that's the point. If the, if the school – wasn't getting good recruits in the first place. And these black coaches are getting what we call quote unquote bad jobs because it's the only thing they can get to get their feet wet in the head coaching realm. Then there's where the problem starts. And and it's going to be nearly impossible for a lot of these guys to get second jobs. But if you guys want to hear some more on this topic, make sure you tune in to our radio show uh, on Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. That's the War Room, and you can catch it on warroomsports.com. Uh, it's that you. This has been a few good moments in the War Room, and as always, everybody, don't accept mediocrity and be steadfast in the war against ignorance. Wow. Kuwait is the War Room with five nights at the round table, five Philly guys diversified in every.